Welcome to this Lee Daniels Art Tutorial, 3D Animation in Blender, The Absolute Basics. First of all, we're going to move over to the animation layout. This will give you a nice preview of your camera view, a 3D viewport, and the dope sheet timeline along the bottom. The principles of animating in Blender are the same as any other animation software. You move an object, you set a keyframe, you move along the timeline, you move your object again, and set another keyframe. And as with all other animation software, Blender has its own way of doing things, which can be a little bit complicated if you're new to it. So I'm going to go over a few of those now. So starting from scratch, let's go to the top view, pressing 7 on the number pad, zoom out. To set the start point for your animation, make sure you're at the start of the timeline. The start and end points of your timeline can be set down here. So I'll just type in 100 to shorten the animation. Starting on frame one, go to your cube, press G to grab and move off to one side. To set a keyframe, press the I. And here you have the option of location, rotation and scale or combinations of all of those. We're just gonna be doing location and rotation. So select that. Down here in the dope sheet, you'll see that a keyframe has been entered on frame one. This is one of the areas that can look a little bit complex at first, but I'll just try and explain. You open up the transforms. We've just set keyframes for the X, Y, and Z location and the X, Y, and Z rotation. And all of these dots represent each one of those values. The reason the dope sheet is laid out like this is so you can select them individually and move them around later. The summary at the top, if you select that, it will select all of those options. So you don't actually need those open at this point and we can just work on the summary. Move the cube to the other side of the screen. If you change the timeline before you've set a keyframe, the cube will jump back to its original position. That's because the keyframe is now set for the rest of the timeline unless you tell it otherwise. So we move our timeline along to 40, grab the cube, move, and then again, I, location and rotation. So now if we scrub the timeline, the cube will move across the screen. And this simple process is the basis for all animation in Blender. So now using the same principle, you can move along to the last keyframe and still in the top view, hit R for rotation, type in 180, press I, location and rotation. So now if we scrub the animation, you'll see that the cube now rotates as well as changes location. So now let's start with a fresh project and use these principles to animate something a bit more interesting. Go to the animation scene setup, select the cube, press G to grab, and then hold down the control key. This will snap the cube to the blender grid. So just move it up one grid space. So it's effectively sat on the floor. Then press Shift and A and add a plane. Press S to scale and hit 20. Now we've given ourselves a cube and a floor. Select the cube, press I, set a keyframe for location and rotation. Move along in the timeline to 40. Back to the main window, press I, location and rotation. These solid bars here indicate that there's no movement happening in between these two keyframes. Go to 20, the central point, and again, press G, and then press Z to snap to the Z axis and move the cube up into the air. And then press I, location and rotation. So now, if we scrub through, our cube will do one bounce. Moving along the timeline a bit further to 70, but not quite as far as before. We can either press I to add more keyframes, or we can copy and paste the previous keyframes. Command or Control C, Command or Control V. And the same again, move to the central point, press G and Z. Move the cube up, but not quite as high, and then press I and hit keyframes for location and rotation. So now our cube bounces twice. 
you can copy the same process again, moving slightly further forward in the timeline, copy and paste, then go to the central point G and Z to move the cube up, I to set location and rotation keyframes. So now if we play through, we'll have three bounces. Although we have the position of the cube where we want, we're not quite getting the realistic movement of a bounce. To do that, we need to open the graph editor. Drag up another window. Go to graph editor. Just slide these up to give us a bit more room. The visible channels down the left hand side are the same as the dope sheet. So if you open out the object transforms, you'll still see your location keyframes and your rotation keyframes, but they're displayed in graph form. So you can see the interpolation of the movement in between them. So this blue line represents the Z location. There's no representation of X and Y because we're only moving up and down on the Z axis. Select Z location. You'll see the highest point represented by this part of the graph and then down, up, down, up, down. And the reason we have that kind of soft bounce is because of these curves. And this is just the way Blender calculates the interpolation in between the keyframes. And we can alter these manually to get the movement we want. So on that first bounce, select the bottom keyframe, right click and go to handle type free. Now we can select these Bezier handles and using the same universal transform options as the rest of Blender, press G to move and the same for the other side, G to move. Now we've added this very sharp dip in the animation where the cube goes up in the air, holds for a while and then dips very suddenly and bounces back up very suddenly. So if I just play that through you can see the difference between this interpolation and this one. So the same here, select the second bounce keyframe, right click, handle type, free, and then G to move those handles to give that sharp bounce. And the same for the final one, it lands very softly and that's because the curve eases out into that final keyframe. Select the final keyframe, right click, free, and then G to move the Bezier curve. Just go to frame 100 and this is where I want the animation to end. This bottom dialog box, you'll have the range of the animation, the start and end point. Click on end and type in 100. So now when we play it through, the animation will loop after 100 in the viewport. And still see that our cube is holding in a very awkward way on that first lift. We want it to go up faster, hold a little bit and then come back down again. So I'm going to select that top keyframe, stretch it out and the first keyframe, drag it up. Now that we've done the whole animation we can see that it's running a little slow. So what we can do is select all keyframes in the timeline and again using the universal controls of Blender we can scale them using the S key. You can do this in the dope sheet or the graph editor. The dope sheet is a little bit simpler to see and scale transforms will happen from wherever the timeline indicator is placed. So if you place it at the start you can scale those keyframes down in time. Play. So just as an example of how we can add a bit more movement, let's just drag the graph editor down, expand the object transforms of the dope sheet. And for the three rotation values, go to the highest point of the jump, select those three keyframes and press X and delete keyframes. And we'll do the same for the next jump. So now if we change the rotation on the first bounce, our cube will spin through the air. We can do this either by going to the main window and using the R to rotate and then pressing I to set a keyframe, or you can go over to the object properties and alter the value in here. You'll notice when we change the value, 
the box becomes orange and this means that there's no keyframe set. So if we type in 180, you can also press I while hovering over the value field and that will also set a keyframe. So now if we play through, the box will spin 180 degrees and then on the next bounce, it will return to the value of the previous keyframe. You can do the same for the Y value. After that first jump, type in 90. The box turns orange, press I to set a keyframe and play through. And then for the second bounce, we'll do the same again at the highest point. Delete those three rotation keyframes. Go to the final position and then maybe this time change the X value, 90. And then press I to set the keyframe. This was just a basic overview of some animation processes in Blender. I'll cover more complex processes in future tutorials. Please like and subscribe if you found this tutorial useful. And let me know in the comments section what techniques you'd like to see in future tutorials. Thanks for watching.